Thanks for finding time, Sonam. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure to be here. It's my pleasure to be in Australia, to be in this beautiful country. Uh, is this your, your show as well? Thank you. Uh, is this your first visit to Australia? It is my first time and it couldn't have started off better. I started off by performing for the Festival of India, for Confluence, the Festival of India, which is one of the largest festivals they've ever yes. put together. Um, and I performed at the Sydney Opera House, so yes. it was quite magical. Very grateful to the Government of India, to, to Teamwork Arts, to the High Commission of India, to the Department of Arts and Culture, Ministry of External Affairs, everyone who came together to make this happen for us. Yes. So. And this uh, uh, fantastic project, Sufi Gospel Project, how did you conceptualize it? Well, thank you for saying it's fantastic. It's very special and close to my heart. I was singing gospel music, even though I belong to the Sikh religion, for a few years in, in India, in Delhi. And I got invited to sing gospel at the Dargah of Sufi and Ayat Khan, which is a seemingly Islamic space. But I felt when I got that opportunity that a Sikh girl who sings supposedly Christian music, that's how people perceive them, these things, they like to label them, right? So they saw me as a Sikh girl singing Christian music. And I was being invited to a seemingly Islamic space, so I thought that maybe God and the universe was giving me an opportunity to blend all these things together to try and find a unified voice of faith. Mm -hmm. Because essentially we all have our own truths, but each truth is just as valid and we're just saying things we're saying the same thing, but in different ways. So I thought that through music, if I could put forward this message of equality, of oneness, of an acceptance of all faiths as equal, it would mean a lot to me. Yes, of course. Well, uh, apart from that, you have uh, gathered like-minded people to help you on the instruments. Uh, yes. How did it all come about? You know, again, people ask me, they said, how did you all come together? And I say, again, I think just God, and I, I know this sounds bizarre but the universe really helped every step of the way I thought I wanted something and it came my way I think that if you set out to do and this is something I learned a long life that if you set out to do something with honesty and integrity and with determination then even the universe finds a way for it to happen for it to all fall through mm. Obviously, they share your passion for uh, this uh, fantastic music. And they're wonderful musicians, but more importantly, they're wonderful souls. So I've been quite blessed and fortunate, like I said, every step of the way to find people like this to work with, people who share my vision and understand what I'm trying to say through the music. And of course, we've been so fortunate to perform it. God has given us wonderful platforms to be able to share our music as well, and audiences that have been incredible and open and have received this different message you know we haven't got i we haven't got criticism we've just got love and we've received so much love so it's been the most amazing journey for me i can tell you mm. so you have performed uh, everywhere in the world almost everywhere in the world and as compared to those performances how do you feel the audience in Australia en are enjoying your performances. I mean, it's been absolutely fantastic to perform in Australia. As soon as I walked in, I'm stepped onto Australian soil. The energy of the people is infectious. They're happy. There's a sense of great positivity. And then, of course, it's any artist's dream to perform at the Sydney Opera House. I had to pinch myself to know that I wasn't okay. dreaming, that I'd come here, come this far. And it's such a it's, it's so meaningful to an artist when your work is, and it, it's not even, it's not about fame, but it's about people have heard the message that I was trying to share. So when I was at Sydney Opera House, the audience, the technical team, the people, every word, everything was seamless. I can't tell you, it was the most magical day for me. Mm -hmm. It will certainly go down in my, in my life as one of my most special performances. And the audience, as I said, was fantastic. My whole experience, every day has been like I said, really positive. Mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel really good. Mm. Well, uh, in a world which is now torn apart by violence and mistrust, I think your message is extremely important. How do you see that going to bring some sense into this world? Well, all I know is that I have something to say and I need to say it in the way I know best. And if, and this message is important to me, it's what I want to say through the music, this, 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 Equality is very important to me, this acceptance. I've started work and recently performed a new project called The Partition Project, where I talked of stories of separation between India and Pakistan. I don't understand logically hatred. I don't understand wars on religion. So at least as an artist, I feel it's my responsibility through my art to try and convey this message to as many people as I can. And of course, even if one person leaves the room of a hundred people, 
having heard me, then that for me is enough. I can try one note at a time to try and just hope that I can change someone's mindset. But I am going to keep saying it and I'm going to keep on doing it. And the rest I will leave to the universe and to the people. But people have been, as I said, really receptive. We've had some amazing places. We went to Pakistan and we performed. And um, I think all my musicians, they were a bit worried. They said, you know, you must be careful of what you say. And I sat on that stage and I started singing hallelujah going into Allahu because I said, first I have to do what I believe in. Yeah. And you, you will be amazed, the reception we got. So these are preconceived notions that people have of how different territories and people will be. I think person to person, people to people, everyone's got an open heart and they're listening. Mm. I'm a dreamer, so I will continue to dream. Yes, yes. What uh, are the future projects for Sonam Kalra? So as I mentioned to you, we've just started a project on part partition as well. Yes. So we've only done three shows of that. So to keep working on that as well. And this project, and you know, the other thing I don't do is I don't plan. Because I think that that would take away the wonder of every day. And I'd like to li let life come to me. Right. Because no matter how much I plan, he has other plans. So I'm happy to be led and be guided. I do listen a lot. I listen to my inner voice. And wherever it takes me, I'm happy to go. Mm. Well, you, are, uh, you have brought a completely different uh, mode of music. And uh, some of the people who are uh, looking at this program and some of your fans and also many of the music lovers around Australia, what kind of message you want to send out to them? Especially for the Sufi Gospel Project, you mean? Yes. Well, the message I want to send out is very, very pertinent. I want to say that realize that each of us has our own truths and you may find that truth in a temple, a shrine, a mosque, a church or perhaps even if you're an atheist, but that's okay. Mm. What's important to understand is each truth is just as valid. And we need to not just be tolerant, we need to be accepting and respectful of each other's truths. And you know, the beauty in life lies in diversity. So learn to accept and assimilate that diversity around you. Mm. And I hope for peace. That's all I want to say through the music. Yes. I'm sure you have fallen in love with Sydney. I'm sure you will come I back. Absolutely fallen in love with Sydney and I would love to come back. Thanks for talking to Thank us. Thank you for being such wonderful hosts.